changed the St. Mary's in 1902. This building was made with native chestnut by Ashe County craftsmen in the style known at the time as Carpenter's Gothic. Construction began in the summer of 1905 and the first service was held here on Christmas Eve of that year. Besides being an active place of worship, this church is home to three famous works of art. In 1973, a young Statesville, North Carolina named Ben Long had just returned from Italy where he'd been studying fresco painting. And one of the few remaining masters was his teacher. Fresco is a technique of painting mineral pigments into freshly laid plaster while the plaster is still wet. The colors enter into the surface and become part of the wall. Now, in a conversation near this older Ben Long remarked that he felt a great expectancy about this place. And the then rector, Father Hodge, replied, well, this is St. Mary's there, so why not paint her expecting? The fresco of Mary, great with child, on the chancel wall to the left, was the first of a series of frescoes of St. Mary's and Holy Trinity churches, which would introduce the talents of a fine artist and at the same time delight and inspire thousands of people who visit these churches every year. Ben's own wife was pregnant at the time, and since she became the figure model for this portrayal of Mary. The face is that of an anonymous mountain girl. Now Mary had a choice, only she heard the voice of the angel telling her that a child would be holy and would be called the Son of God. It was her own heart and spirit that responded, Here I am, I offer myself like a slave to the Lord. Let it all happen to me just the way you said. Now as the time of birthing rushes towards her, she raises her hand to say, My soul sings out the Lord is great, and my spirit is happy in God, my deliverer. Over her head hangs an eclipse of the sun. Now people in the time of Christ thought an eclipse was the omen of something enormously important about to happen, something wonderful and terrible. Something the world changes. In art and mythology, the moon has been an ancient metaphor for women, so the moon passing between us and the sun is especially appropriate for the scene where the light of the world is temporarily obscured by the flesh of Mary, his mother. We are all Marys, bearers of God, we can each say yes and no to God's minute-by-minute minute eternal proposal. We can choose to be filled with His Spirit, to hear Him, and to bear Him into the world, to make Him flesh and blood again, visible and touchable to others through our lives, or not. Ben Long, the artist, came back to the following year to create the fresco which hangs on the chancel wall to your right, John the Baptizer, cousin to Jesus. His image of John is a fierce wild man of the desert, draped in hairy hide and wielding a big stick. John's eyes have a strange fire in and one has been a long time in the sun, eating bugs and seeing things most of us cannot see, or would rather not see. His voice thunders prophetically. Turn around. Turn your lives, your hearts around. Yes, I wish you the water of repentance, but he is coming so mighty that I'm not fit to carry his shoes. He will cleanse you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In the summer of 1977, Ben Long the artist returned again to do the final fresco here at St. Mary's. This was to be the fresco on the true wall, not, not hung in frames as the previous two were. It was taken two years to make the preparations. The chancel wall had to be bricked up and a base coat of plaster applied and allowed to cure. 
a stained glass window of the virgin and child which used to stand behind the altar was moved to the rear of the nave where, where it now greets you as you enter the church. And through his imagination and skill, the blank plaster wall became a representation of the mystery of faith, the core of Christian belief, which the congregation proclaims with one voice in ancient words, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In the foreground hangs a crucified Jesus in stark three-dimensional realism. Above the head of the corpse, the Romans customarily posted a, a charge for which the criminal was executed, so that others would be afraid to commit the same offense. Finding no Roman crime against the accused, Pontius Pilate wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, and he did it in three languages, Hebrew and Latin and Greek. Here it is represented in the Latin form, I-N-R-I, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Rising above and beyond the crucified King of the Jews is, is Christ the King as a spiritual presence against the background of clouds. Ben Long the artist painted the risen Christ as transcending any identifiable race or nationality. <laughs> 